So we're here with a phase one and uh, who are you? Well, I'm Gerald Schindke or Gerald. I'm uh, responsible for the German market for phase one. Uh, from We service the German market from our Köln office here. So um, this is a new camera? Yes, this is our new IQ4 150 with the 150 megapixel sensor, highest resolution, highest quality camera we have at the moment. The highest in the world, no? Yes, it's by far the highest in the world. It's, uh, it's a medium format, large format sensor with a high, very high demand, dynamic range and uh, just thrilling quality. So I guess it's by far the best system at the moment you can buy. Best camera in the world. Yes. That's what phase one means? We want to be number one? Is that what it means? We are number one. You, are, you have in, been for in, many years? In terms years? of quality, in terms of innovation in the medium format, phase one is, in my view, by far number one. We set the pace. We're by far, we set the technology, we drive the market. So, um, you're holding it in your hand, so it can be a handheld or it can be in a studio? As you wish. It, it, it's basically from the functionality, it can be used in basically any kind of application. It, it's, it's handheld, it can be used in the studio. Uh, we have the new Infinity platform, with all, it gives us tremendous flexibility. If you want to you work tethered, if you want to work untethered, uh, handheld, and so on and so forth. Basically, there's no uh, no limits in the way you can operate the camera. Uh, in, 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 in be it as an as an architectural photograph, be it as a studio photograph, be it as landscape, be it as fashion or whatever. The camera basically does can can help you with all your jobs. Can you power it on this one? I can power it on. So it's real. It is real, it's still a prototype, it needs a couple of seconds, but it is, uh, it is the hardware, mechanically it's, it's, it's all there, uh, electronically it's all there, it's just uh, questions, as you can see we have Capture One inside now, uh, we have a lot of flexibilities, a lot of ideas. Oh, pin code, I don't want to check your pin no, code. No, that's okay, it's, it's, it's still a demo pin code, yeah. it just, it just worked. We have so a, you had a pin code to get in? We have a pin code to can get in, to secure it, we have... Uh, is it running uh, Linux? It is running a derivative of Linux. Linux, yes. So it's booting up Linux on right here, and then um, uh, you got the whole UI, which is optimized for uh, the top of the pro in the world. Yes. They want, what do they want to do with it? For example, they want to take um, the most amazing architecture, fashion photography. Um, well, yes, basically, you can do any. We have we have a very flex. I need. I just need to double check if we have. Hold on. Yeah. If we have any... There, we have, if we have images, uh, oh, by coincidence, I didn't want to see this. There's people, we have a UI, we have a... Yeah. Multi-touch. Multi-touch, multi-gesture UI. Um, very, very fast, and as it's captured one inside, this is a color cal calibrated uh, image of the scenery. And... Uh, can you take a 150 megapixel picture of me? I should be able to do so, yes. Hold on. Oh my god, I'll be captured forever in 150 megapixels. I need to remove my glasses. Ooh. I should. Hold on. Hold on. Where is it? Yeah. There it is. Oh my god. That's me? That's you? That's how I look like? That's what you look like? Nice. I'm in 150 megapixel right now. Uh, that's very exciting. So what's special about this? If I'm in 150 megapixel, that means you can print me in a big wall? Well, there's many things to it. The new sensor, you have. You don't only have the 100 megapixel sensors. Yes, of course, with 100 megapixel sensors... You 150, can, right? 150 megapixels. You can do, for instance, A0 at 300 dpi, which is a very important benchmark to what hit. What is that? Uh, A0? A0 is okay by it's a European format, it's a large basic poster size A3 output resolution. So yes, you can do very, very strong enlargements. But it's 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 also the color fidelity of the sensor. The sensor is extremely uh, renders extreme good colors and with the capture one inside we just produce brilliant, fascinating images and it has a dynamic range of uh, 15 F stuffs so you can Basically, from, from you have a whole lot of range to to to, to, 
you know, set, increase, look into the dark regions, pull down the highlights, increase the shadows, and just have details and texture in all parts of the images. And when you downscale to a lower resolution, it's better to take from a higher yeah. source. We have, we have actually, we have customers who have proven that uh, uh, even on a web shop, that medium format images uh, generate higher sales better sales than images taken on, on uh, DSLR cameras. Better sales? Yes. We have customers who buy, especially for, for this reason, web shop customers who buy uh, medium format. So if you go, just go just over here, can you come and then, uh, for example, they are taking uh, photography of food, for example? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. so that's what you were saying? Yeah. So uh, that kind of stuff. It's, 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 Does that mean people are more likely to want to? The images, this? the images are cleaner. If if if, if you if you uh, downscale a high res image, a medium form image, image, the images are cleaner than if you if you use a medium a DSLR camera and so on and so forth. So uh, phase one is a Danish company. We're a Danish company. Yes. So uh, and making the best camera in the world. Yes. How's that possible? We're making the best camera. It's. It's 25 years of experience being in a digital market. We were founded. We were the, when we were founded. We were founded for the sole purpose of creating the best image quality digital. While everybody else was still shooting film, we have acquired 25 years of knowledge on how to uh, enhance images, on how to control, and calibrate colors, and so on and so forth. So basically, it's, it's 25 years of experience. It's it's a huge. We have a, we spend a big amount in R and D, so we have many colleagues in in, in Denmark, but also in different countries, uh, doing trying to to, to increase the and, and finding ways to increase the quality uh, and, and resolution and all these parameters. It's just basically the digital part is 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 in our veins. That's that's. Uh, I didn't know that Denmark had the best camera stuff. Well, it just not, happens to well, be. Now you know. And everybody agrees that this is the best? The whole industry is like, yeah, this is the best? I would say there's, that is for the others on the, on the show to prove. But if you look at it's not only these kind of cameras. It's not only uh, cameras for the standard photography. We also have specialist cameras in the world of reproduction and in the aerial market. Also there, I think we are the qualities lead, quality leaders. We have whatever. Our yeah. core, oh, our core functionality, our, our core. Yeah. What we do, our, what we do is what we want to do best. So basically, we deliver the best 3D models, the most flexible. We deliver the best aerial cameras. So this is the one, maybe yeah. let's say Google might be using for that, Google Maps, maybe. That is just the ID product for them. I'm not allowed to mention yeah. any names, but. It, it is definitely being used in the market. Because then they can have, uh, right now, 100 megapixel, maybe 150. This is already a 150 megapixel aerial camera. So then you put it on an airplane or a drone, we, we and then... It, we put it on airplanes or drones, yes. And you get the highest resolution of uh, That's right. aerial. That's right. And this one is for? This one is uh, for multiple applications, uh, uh, primarily for um, cultural heritage market, reproduction, um, reproduction of uh, paintings, books, all these, where color fidelity and resolution, again, is a very important factor, um, the most important factor, because basically if you take out the Gutenberg Bible or whatever, um, you, don't, you don't want to shoot it at, uh, with, a, with a handheld camera at, at low resolution. The so book this, is valuable. Without saying customers again, this could potentially be for projects like Google Books or something, where they scan the books, maybe. Yeah. Or something you, like that. We, we have or the Vatican when they scan the, all the Vatican papers yes, and stuff like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. There's no better way to scan. There's 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 no better way to scan. Yes, it's it's a fast instantaneous capture uh, at a very high resolution, uh, very good color fidelity. It's it's we uh, basically there's there's parameters, there's metamorphosis, there's uh, all these kinds of norms and ISO norms and quality aspects you have to fulfill we do this with the uh, with uh, our phase one systems as we have the we have the whole we're in control of the whole um, the whole product from 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 the lens to the capture one inside to the capture one processing on a computer the whole every part of this system is designed 
by phase one, and that why everything integrates neatly together. And then, uh, so I guess it has a very powerful processor in there, uh, maybe some kind of FPGA or something. You don't really say, right? Exactly what's going on. Well, it's, I'm, I'm in sales. Yeah. That's, for, that's for the engineers to tell you. We, yeah. we do, of course, have FPGAs. We have a very powerful platform on which everything runs. Uh, Amazing software, Amazing stable, software. or software well, updates. Capture One yeah. is a de facto industry standard. And that's stable, and you, uh, I guess everybody in the market knows it, and it's it's now integrated also in, in our digital packs. So architects use your product? Uh, everybody. Every, everybody, oh, everybody who has very high quality uh, demands. demands and so on and so forth. It's, so it, it's, it's, it's not a cheap product, right? It's not right? a cheap product, no. no? It, 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 the new one, is there a price for the new one? The new one is, is in, in euros is approximately 40,000 euros. 40? 40. 40,000, yeah? Yes. So, um, available how soon? Uh, uh, it, it will be available starting uh, October. October. We hope to finalize uh, everything this month. Nice. No, it's, it, well, let's say mid-October. Can you introduce these guys from Fraunhofer so I can check what they're doing? Yes. All right. Basically, this is, this is Matthias from yeah. Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer has developed a 3D application. Uh, they're a very ingenious application to digitize, fully digitize uh, objects uh, three-dimensionally, and they're using our camera. And luckily, Matthias is fluent and a fluent English speaker, and uh, you Thanks. can ask him. Hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Matthias Domainko from Fraunhofer Institute, and here we are showing the collaborative project with Phase One, uh, where we develop yeah. this, uh, this, this uh, autonomous uh, scanning system. So you have a, an original old Chinese statue, or it could be, and then you would uh, have the, the the Phase One right here. And what's going on? Yes, exactly. So basically, this um, it's a completely autonomous uh, scanning system. Uh, the main idea is that the operator can just place the object on the turntable and the whole system detects the object, size of the object, basic shape of the object, and then it actually scans the whole object completely automatically. Now oh. we can actually start the scanning process. The scanning process runs in two different phases. Right, let me jump over here. So um, you click start, this is your software? Yeah, currently this is like a demo mode, and we can also now skip already this demo mode, and we can already start with the scanning process. Yeah. Now you can see that the first phase uh, just started. Here the backlight uh, switches on and the camera captures the object while the object rotates on the turntable. With this, uh, with this approach you already get basic shape on the screen. You can already see uh, the backlight and the highlighted object. And this is already enough that we get uh, basic shape. We use silhouettes of the object in uh, the algorithm called space carving get basic dimensions, basic shape of the object, which is used, then we get basic 3D model, which is used for, a net, for in our smart algorithm, which is called next best view planning. Uh, and this next best view planning algorithm plans the whole scanning process to capture all the details of the object, all the holes, all the occlusions. And at the end, basically, our system generates final 3D model of very high, resolution and you can see it here this is a, for example final model resolution that we can achieve is 20 micrometers 20 micrometers exactly. is that the highest precision with current in the world or uh, uh, actually uh, on our based on our knowledge it is uh, the best uh, resolution that you can achieve but we can scan of objects we could say this but we can go, go even higher it always depends on the equipment so if we would use for example a different lens here we are using 72 millimeter lens if we would use another um, lens which is 120 mi millimeter macro lens we could go even higher in the resolution oh and uh, uh any customers using this or only in uh, research uh, currently it's a fully functional prototype we tested already the whole scanning system with different museums where we scanned uh, some collections, museum collections, and uh, basically the results are very, very good as you can see it on the screen and hopefully next year it will come all, already to the production. This is production. very, very important to preserve history. And, uh, and there's no other camera that can, that can be as good? Phase one is best? Actually, uh, for sure, the phase one is the best and particularly this camera because it has a very special focusing mechanism Uh, which can uh, focus the 
really precisely and the repeatability of the focusing mechanism is so precise that we can pre-calibrate the camera for specific focusing steps. Is that auto-focus or no? No, it's Scans, not focus. What do you manually? Computer, the focus is being computed. Computed. Yes, and, and, and the system, actually this system will go to a customer site. It will be on, installed at a customer site. If this really is the best way to scan, then every single art piece ever needs to go through this, right? Because it's so important. What if the art piece breaks or, you know, you need to have a, a yeah. perfect yeah. scan? It's true. It's, it's true. And, and of course, we'd love to see every art piece being scanned, but it's still a financial issue. The system is... The, the Louvre Museum needs one, right? For sure. All these places, For British sure. Museum. No, but, but I think, I think honestly, I believe uh, um, technology-wise, we're at a tipping point, and I'm sure that we will see uh, museums install these systems. It's it's still a financial. It's quite a big issue financially. It's to just buy the equipment. Well, once it's bought, you can yes, just scan as many as you want. Of course, of course. Right. But there's. But I I, I do believe I, from the feedback we got on show, I'm I'm certain that. Um, we will see these go systems go out into the museums in the very near future. Because it's actually scanning uh, the, all the, the the original colors. Yeah, it's it's, it's not just a three D shape. No, it's 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 a, it's a, we have the three D model, but it's also color color corrected, color calib calibrated. So you have a true representation of the object, and basically anybody can take. Uh, the, 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 the art piece or whatever, take it in his hands virtually and look at it from all sides and, and even check for certain changes, differences or analyze the product, understand the product, whatever. Maybe, the maybe Fraunhofer or another company might have a very precise 3D printer and be able to reproduce exact copies. Uh, that's true. Actually, also at our uh, Fraunhofer Institute we have another department which, were, uh, which is 3D printing department and uh, works with very precise color calibrated printers and we already had a collaborative project where we actually scanned uh, specific objects that are very sensitive and cannot be exposed uh, outside in a natural environment. This is why we scanned under a controlled environment, we scanned the objects and the, the objects were printed with the other department to be shown to the users, users could interact with the objects and otherwise it's not possible even to see these objects. Like this one, maybe is a 3D printed one? On the original? This one is not 3D printed, but it could be printed uh, easily. All right. So thanks a lot. Thank so uh, yeah, so that is, that's exciting. And um, so this is a good show for you, Photokina. The show, the show has been very good for us. We've had uh, a very big interest on both the I, uh, XF IQ4 150. That's um, just going skyrocketing from the, from, from the interest and sales have come in and they're coming in and I'm very so positive that we'll get much more sales. But we've also got a very good feedback on the 3D printer and also on our auto column uh, um, scanning solution we have on uh, showing at other places on this exhibition. Um, I, I see a great potential for the future and I see a, I, I think this this segment is really kicking off. And which country, maybe it's a secret, but which country is the biggest market for phase one? Uh, this, I guess US it's, is a big it's, market. It's also. A, it's a standard market. It's it's uh, obviously uh, as everywhere in the, for probably most countries. It's China. It's US. It's Germany, France, and and ma it's all the major markets you have in general. Do uh, people that take pictures of the German cars need to have this kind of camera? Yes, they do. Totally need yes, that, right? The uh, I would say. Uh, uh, in the in the car photography, uh, the phase one products are the de facto standards. Simon Pushman, who is basically provided us with the images on the background, he's a famous car shooter. He obviously also shoots with phase one, uh, just as basically every other. And those photographers who might not be able to invest, they they rent out the systems. Phase one is the de facto medium format rental system. So you rent directly from phase one? No, we have uh, we have rental outlets that provide. Because, for example, uh, uh, Ari, they they have some cameras you can only rent. You don't have this, right? No, we, no, you can you can buy what what you can rent or vice versa. We have we have rental studios helping out, but uh, everything we have is is also a buying product, selling product.